Hey guys, it's Natalia and today I have another Taylor Swift recreation for you And this one will be using one of my patterns that isn't specifically made for this, but it works really well either way We're gonna be making the 1989 set from the Eras tour and we're gonna be using the better than a wrench dress Pattern that I put out last year because it's a perfect like princess seam lined dress And if we just like cut it it can very easily become a two-piece. So that's what we're gonna do today So let's get into it I've got my pattern cut out already in my customer's measurements. So what we're gonna do is cut it at the waist. So there are little waist notches on the pattern. So connect those for your size. And then that's where we're gonna chop. Once you have all of your pieces cut out in the pattern, we're gonna go ahead and cut it out in our fabric. So we're gonna cut it all out in sequins first. And then after the sequins, you're gonna wanna cut it out in also the lining. I personally chose a darker colored lining because I felt like the sequins were a little too bright and I wanted to like dull them a bit. So I found that having a darker like more navy-ish royal blue behind it really helped with that and made it a little less like turquoisey and more true to the actual color. And make sure that while you're cutting, you're also kind of piecing together which piece is which because they start to look the same. So you want to make sure you know that the side front is the side front and not the side back so that when you start pinning all of your pieces together, it's all in the correct format. So put together all of the seams like center front to side front, side front to side back, side back to center back, and obviously leaving the center back open for all of it. So we're going to do that for both the lining and the outer shell for both the skirt and the top for the sequins i like to use the little sewing clips to keep it together and then for the lining i'm just using pins but you can use whatever you want and now we're just going to go ahead and sew up all of those seams remember that this pattern has a seam allowance of half an inch and for the side seams of the skirt if you want to make it just like taylor's where she has the little slits make sure to obviously not sew all the way down and sew to where you want the slit to be because I forgot to mention that earlier, but she does have little slits. So you can kind of choose whether or not to add that in, but I am deciding to do that. So I did leave like a bit open at the bottom. Just make sure the length is the same on the left and the right sides, as well as the lining and the outer shell so that it all matches up nicely when we put it all together. Once all of your seams are sewn, go ahead and press them all open on the lining. You don't want to press open the sequins because you will melt the sequins. So don't do that, but do it for the lining parts. Now it's time to put our lining to the outer shell. So putting it right sides together, go ahead and pin all of the seams, make sure they are matching. We're gonna be sewing the like top waistline and then the bottom hem and keeping open the center back. So go ahead and pin all of that and we're gonna go ahead and sew along all of those. Once all of that is sewn up, we're gonna cut our corners so that when you turn it around, all of the corners are nice and sharp and lay flat. So now we get to turn it around and go ahead and make sure to point those corners out so they look nice and this is what it should look like. Now we're gonna go ahead and go on with the top. So we're gonna make the straps for it. You can kind of choose the length based on like what you need yourself, but I like to do a sequin and a lining. Obviously you don't want like sequins against your body, so make sure to do that and sew it all up. I like to do a two inch width so that then I can do half an inch seam allowance and then just cut down the seam allowance to then turn it around and then you end up with a one inch strap. To put together the top, I'm gonna place the straps on the lining first. Make sure to put lining on lining and place them where you want it to be. I like to do it on the seams and then on the back, you can kind of choose where you want it to be, but I do it between like the side back and center back and make sure to match all of your seams up. And now we're gonna sew through the top and the bottom, leaving the center back open. So now we're gonna cut our corners of the top as well and then also put in some notches on all the parts that are a little bit more curved so that it turns out a little bit easier. 
and then when you turn it out we just have to go ahead and iron it all down just do it from the lining side and obviously do a low setting so that you don't melt the sequins and just be very careful with it but this will help it look really nice and clean and then i also did it for the skirt as well And now it's time for the fun part of adding all the trims. So I started with a silver trim. I just kind of played around with it until I found like the right design. She kind of has this like diamond shape all over the top and the bottom. And I just kind of played around with it, cut things out, pieced it as well as I could, used as many reference pictures as I could. But I think in general, if you just put some sort of diamond shape on it, people will understand what you're going for. So that's kind of what I did. And as soon as I had it kind of ready to go, I went ahead and hand sewed it down. I kind of wish I would have bought a trim that I could have just like sewn on by machine, but also this one just like looked the nicest out of all the ones that I could find. So I went ahead and just hand sewed it down. It took a long, long time, not gonna lie, but the result is really nice. So we did the same thing for the top. Again, just putting all of it in like a diamond shape. I did leave like the center backs kind of a little bit more bare so I could do the zippers and then add the rest of it. But yeah, go ahead and sew that down first. Now it's time for the zippers. You're gonna need an invisible one for the skirt and then a separating one for the top. So I went ahead and started with the skirt one. If you want a full tutorial on how to put in an invisible zipper, I do have a separate tutorial for that. But once you put the zipper in, then you finish off the rest of the seam and then you're gonna have some hand sewing for some of the lining. So I went ahead and just pinned that in place to get ready to be sewn later. And now it's time to do the separating zipper on the top. So I went ahead and did one side of it and then the other. And when you have both sides in, then you're probably gonna wanna cut it because I assume you probably didn't find one that's the perfect size. The only thing about this is that you wanna make sure you add stoppers to the top, otherwise your zipper is going to completely just come out. So make sure to do that. And then again, pin to the lining where I needed to to then hand sew it down. And to hand sew it down, I just did an invisible stitch so that it's not noticeable, but obviously you can kind of do whatever you want. It's on the inside, so nobody's going to see it anyway. But I went ahead and did that for the skirt, getting the lining down to the invisible zipper. And then we do the same thing for the top, getting the lining down to the separating zipper. Once the zippers were all in place, now it was time to finish off the designs with the trim on the back. I wanted them to line up perfectly, so I decided to just like leave that for afterwards because sometimes with zippers, you never know if it's gonna line up properly or not. So I went ahead and did that and sewed it all down so that now all we have left to do is add the fringe trim. Okay, so I like to use pre-made trim like this, and then I just take out each individual strand. Sometimes they'll have a knot with them, this one didn't. I'll trim it down a little bit and then burn the edges so it kind of seals it. And then, I don't even know how to explain this, but I just kind of BS my way through and try to somehow cling my thread to it. Like if you just wrap it a million times and make a bunch of knots, like it'll eventually cling on pretty well. And then you can individually kind of put that on the piece and you can do this all over as much as you want. I did it all over, but hopefully that's a good explanation. Again, just a million knots until you feel like it's secure enough and I have never had an issue with them. So once you cover your entire piece with them as much as you want, this should be somewhat of the end result. I think it's so cute. I am obsessed with how this turned out. And yeah, let me know what you guys think. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do recreate this, I'd love to see it. So send me pictures on Instagram or tag me or anything. I'm dying to see it in every other color. For this one, my customer did want it to be a little bit longer because she didn't want to actually show her torso as much. So I did make it longer. But if you do make it, I would probably cut it to like here-ish to be more like Taylor's and probably make it a little bit shorter. But this is what she requested, so we went with it. But yeah, I think this is such a fun piece. It's so cute. So again, tag me if you do make it, or if you find any other Taylor outfits that work with this pattern, let me know because I've made so many with this pattern, I feel like, and it's just like a tried and true. So obviously the pattern will be linked down below for you guys to check it out. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.